Welcome back. This is going to be the first of two episodes. First episode, I'm going to go over the team so far in this 2024 season. And then the second episode, I'll make one for the World Juniors, which I am the head coach of Sweden. And it starts today. So if we have a peek at the stats page on ours, you'll see here that we are 24-8 and eight so far this season. Have an awesome looking team. This is the depth chart for this year. This is... Uh, one of my favorite forward groups I've had. I drafted a lot of forwards very high. Uh, if you look at this right here, my first round pick this year is Brennan. Uh, he's the, probably the best talented rookie I've had since Clark. Uh, Brennan's got a 15 shot, so he's putting up over a point a game as a rookie. 26 games, 32 points, which is very cool. He's got the league thinks he's a five potential. My scout has him as a four. He's got awesome offensive game, so I'm really excited to see what he looks like in a few years. He might actually get drafted pretty high in the NHL. And then we have the other two stud second round picks. Uh, we got Bear. And so I have all three of those guys in the line, so I'm really looking forward to their future. If you look here, uh, Kozlowski already grew. He was 6'4", 178 at the draft, so he's already gained over 25 pounds, which is really cool. He's learned right wing, which is why his stats been so low this year. If uh, I had a really balanced team this season, so I made all lines have 15 minutes a game, which is crazy. So the 16-year-old line is right here. It's just, so they're all 9 and 8 rated, just as good as those other lines. They just need, uh, Koslowski's performance was down because he was learning right wing, so he was really inexperienced there. This is the 18-year-old line, Packer, Joe, and the 6'4 right winger, I can't say his name. I have really, really liked that line. They're pure defensive line. 6'3", 220 center with 14 positioning. Got really good strength, huge size, really balanced offensive game. Should be all 12s and 13s in a couple seasons. Should be back as an OA maybe. And then, as you can see on the left wing, you got Packard there, 6'2", 215. So even the fourth line is pretty balanced. My first line is the 19-year-old line, which I'm expecting two of the three back for their 20-year-old seasons. I think Wernich, my leading goal scorer here, over a point a game, I think he's going to be in the AHL next season. I think he's too good to be an OA. He'll, he was a fifth-round NHL pick. He's got awesome. He can play all three spots. He's got awesome stats, awesome game, really good hitter, good four checker. I have him as an aggressive four checker, I think. And he's got the best skating on the team. So I really like him. I think he'll be gone. I think Wilder will be back as no way, which is I I always like Wilder. He's just got some cool parts to his game. He's got really good checking and face offs as a hitter. So I just figure he's a six one, two hundred twenty pound aggressive player. Always been a defensive oriented center. Doesn't have incredible defensive ratings, but they're pretty decent and he's got a balanced overall game. Good mental ratings decent skater so I just think has no way next season he'll be a big physical force having a guy that's really good at face offs and hitting and stuff just be a nice OA I think to have a realistic one and then Kuhn will be the other OA next season he's got the A this year he was my former first round pick 165 pounds he's gained about 30 pounds and he's always had an offensive good game his defense is finally starting to catch up he's got 13 stick checking which is cool and he's a really good skater so he's got the best uh one of the best leaderships on the team too. So I think he'll be uh, a nice OA with Wilder next season. And so if you look at next year's depth chart, we'll have, uh, I have that 19 year old line back. And then with Sinchenna, he's the only guy that didn't really have a clear spot this year, even though he's one of the best players. So I'm expecting to have those 16 year olds step up and be the first line next season. And then the, uh, the line that's the 18 year old line, that's going to be the 19 year old line next year is the two Kellermans with Baker. Baker's probably been, one of the top players on the team. He's at a, sitting at a point a game, and he's got really cool offensive ratings too. His defense is really caught up too, and pretty much is almost as good, if not better, than his offense. So he's been a terrific all-around player. He's going to be an absolute stud next season, I think, as a 19-year-old. Just a dominant, dominant uh, OHL player there at 6'2", 220. And then we have the Kellermans have really been good. at 5'8", 180 pounds, I drafted this guy. And he's now six foot two fifteen. So that's one of my favorite uh, growth spurts I've had in the game so far. Just having a guy get so much taller, and he's still only eighteen, so he might grow a little bit more. He's got almost two and a half full years left because I think he'll have his whole nineteen-year-old season and then his whole twenty-year-old overage season. So he's got a lot of uh, untapped potential. Like the league thinks he's at his potential, but my scout thinks he's still one point five stars away. So it'll be interesting to see who's right on that. Even if he doesn't get much better, he's still a really good OHL player. It'll just be uh, really, really good if he gets to what my scout says. He has a three and a half star because then his defense should get uh, 
pretty elite, I would say, with the 15 positioning and those things, and hopefully getting a bit better. And he's already a top level skater for this league, so I think that's pretty cool. And then Kellerman is just one of the most balanced players I've ever had. He's got amazing ratings in almost all four levels here. His defense is elite. He's a really good checker. He's a big body, 6'1, 215. He's a top notch skater. He's got good stamina, and he's got really good passing and just a balanced offensive game there and he's just always put up pretty solid points there he was really good uh as a rookie there he put up that was the third liner and then last year he had a little bit of a weird year i can't remember what the issue was with that and then his team wasn't great but he still put up 30 points and then this season he's put up a plus 13 plus minus and been a pretty solid two-way player and he's on a solid second line that should really be really good next year. So I'll be interesting to see. And then I guess the last thing to talk about would be the goalie situation. I've got Hickey here. Oh, and other thing I didn't mention too is Brennan actually made the World Under-17 Challenge, which was cool. Won the gold medal there. Him and Bear actually both made the team. Um, where's Bear here? Bear is just incredible. If you look at his ratings as a 16-year-old, he's going to be so, so, so good in a couple of years. He's unbelievable. He's already a really good defender, and he's already a really good offensive player, so it's scary to think how good he'll be in two or three years. The league has him at a 3.5 star, which is actually a little bit down, I think, when I draft him as a 4 star. But, yeah, he's just uh, he's just incredible. So I'm super excited to see see him and Brennan, Brennan uh, grow up together and be on that same line for three or four years. That's going to be crazy with that big monster 6'5", 205 uh, right winger there. So yeah, the goal or the defense situation, Hickey's really come a long way. His defense is so good now, which is cool. He's six six. He was the guy that was six five, one seventy five when I drafted him. So it's amazing to see his progression in size and defensive ratings and his twelve strength. I'm so excited to have him back next season as a nineteen year old. I think actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I think he'll be the last OA that season instead of one of these three. I'll take two of those forwards. And then I'll probably make him the third one. Because he's just going to be two monsters as a 20-year-old and two users to not get back. So we're missing some size on defense. We got 5'9", 180 here. 6'1", 210 is pretty good. 5'10", like 190, and 6'1", 180. So I think having a 6'6", 220 guy back that season to solidify the defense group will be uh, really sweet. I won't worry about that too much. That's pretty far away still. He's Next season, he's going to be the number one guy on the left side there. Just really, really excited to... Next year's going to be the nastiest team with those forwards. Holy smokes. And all these defense will have some pretty good uh, experience there. Shuttle and all the all four of these guys will pretty play pretty significant minutes their whole career since they were 16. So that'll be cool. I haven't decided if Clark's going to be back as no way yet. I think we'll probably pick between him and... Um, Let's see if we can get Wernich back. Like I said, might be too good for the OHL. We'll see. It'll be one of those two. But I think... We don't really need Clark back. We'll see. We'll have one spot. We might sign a top OA goalie again, but depends if we can't seem to get this guy to report from, uh, I've tried for two years now, almost drafted him when he was 17. So this guy is going into his 19 year old season in September. Uh, he's just an absolute monster. So he just doesn't want to come to Canada yet. So I drafted another top international guy this year with my CHL pick, who I really like, Sokolov. He's only 17 from Russia. So I'm hoping he's the future goalie. Uh, but both those guys aren't interested in signing with Canada yet. And hopefully... Oh! No way. <laughs> that just changed. I've tried that for two years. and Almost every month I've given it a try. and It finally changed. So I think we're ready to bring him over. Wow. That is huge. He is unbelievable. Look at his mental ratings. So that's 17 determination, 17 professionalism mental toughness oh he's gonna be so because he'll be wait let's see here so he's 2005 i'm getting confused here so 2005 would be the same age as clark yeah so that's what'll happen he'll be the he'll actually this age is wrong then he's 20 that year he's 19 this year yeah so he'll be the oa next season i guess instead of wait no i'm getting confused here again this is this season. I think I have Clark's age wrong. That's where I'm getting confused. I don't think he's 19. I think. He's... Let's see here. 
are the OAs 2004s? Yes. Okay, so Clark is 19. So, yeah, this is next season. So, yeah, we're going to have... He's going to be an OA. I had that age wrong. So let's see. I'll make sure I didn't have him here. Yeah, okay, good. So, next season, he'll be the OA then, and he'll be my starting goalie. Oh, that's huge. So, we'll have to get him over, and then I don't know what to do because we've got two OAs already there. So, maybe... Oh, we'll just sign a third guy, I guess. He can have three goalies, so we have one open spot. So, that's what we'll do here. We'll sign him, and he'll be back as an OA next season, my starting goalie. And then... That's huge because next season goalie was a big question mark. So that's unbelievable news. Uh, he, as you can see, he's absolutely dominating his age group. Over there, he's playing at a 930 save percentage just three seasons in a row. So he is a guy that I'm really excited to get on the team. I can't wait till he's uh, got a whole year progression under his belt. Just his size, the fact that he's a European goalie is always kind of cool. I know in real life they're kind of highly sought after. So that's awesome. And then on the right side, we got the 18-year-old Biacchini's number one defenseman is an 18-year-old. He's not solid, or sorry, not flashy, but he's solid. He's got another year there, and he's just a guy that, uh, I haven't drafted a lot of high picks on the defensive side of things, and he's just a guy that's got three years' experience next season. He'll just have some solid chemistry with a few different players he's been around for a while, and Shuttle's really come along, too. Just drafted a couple guys in the mid-rounds that have turned out pretty decent. I probably should have taken at least one or two guys a little higher on the defensive side of things, but I've just had so many good forwards in the drafts last year that it's been tough to pass on them. Um, and Carlson's another steady 19-year-old who's actually got the highest plus-minus on the team. So I've just kind of, like, tried to go with a lot of experience on defense and make up for the a little bit of talent there. I think... Uh, and I've been kind of lucky with Trotter being a pretty solid player the last few years. But I just haven't had that star defenseman other than Clark. I think uh, – I, I don't think – I don't really regret the decision, but it would be nice to have that kind of one or two top guys that can really plug a lot of minutes in the playoffs. So you know what? Maybe what we'll do here after the episode is at the trade deadline, we'll see if we can bring over a top-notch defenseman, even if it costs a couple second-round picks. Because this year and next year is kind of the year where we're going to be really good. We should be good for a while, though, just because we have that really good 16-year-old line. So that line with uh, Brennan in here and Bear will be good enough to kind of carry us in a few years when there's superstar 18-year-old. I think we should be pretty good all of the next three seasons, at least, maybe in the next four. Or so I don't want to give up too much of the future, but we do have a lot of depth, so I wouldn't mind giving up a couple second-round picks and we can somehow find a way to bring in a top-notch 13 or 12 or 14 rated defensemen. So we'll see at the deadline what we can do. But this episode, uh, I'll keep it at that. I don't want to make it too long. I just really want to go over all those guys and just the fact that uh, we can get that goalie really is pretty exciting. And then I will show you these goalie stats. I don't think we've gone over those yet. So we have this uh, Mills I brought over. He had a couple of years in Windsor where 15 and 30 records, 16 and 25, and always kind of a weak team under him. Brought him over here and he's just been lights out. 9-13 Save percentage is one of the best goalie seasons I've ever had. And he has just been amazing. So he's actually got a couple gold medals too when he was younger. So that's kind of cool. Just got some experience on in the international level. And then we got Sidoc, who went to his second Montreal Canadiens training camp in a row. So he's got some pro experience under his belt. He's in his overage season. He's been a really steady piece for a long time now. He's got 16 wins when he was 17, 21 wins, 23 wins. So he's just been an, I have two of the most like experienced goaltenders I've ever had on the same team, split in time 50-50, and they've both been lights out. So it's one of the coolest situations I've ever had. I don't know if the defense is playing well or if both goalies are that good, but the 9-10, 9-13 save percentages out of those two are two of the best I've ever had. It's pretty rare to get a guy with over a 900 save percentage in the OHL in the game. So it's been so, so fun to have those guys. And I just this year has been a ton of fun. I've been going pretty quickly just because I've been really enjoying it. So having those two goalies is so awesome. That's why I was so excited about that European guy next year because I didn't want goalie to be an issue in a season where we're just stacked on the forward side of things. So that's super, super good news. And, yeah, I'll keep the episode, leave the episode at that. And uh, last, actually, last thing I'll do is show you one or two more quick things. I have... Uh, this guy on Sarnia, as we've talked about in previous episodes, like the best prospect I've ever seen in this game. The stats he's putting up are hilarious. As you can see, he's top of every single category here. He's got 84 points and no one else over 55. He's got 47 assists, no one else over 37, and the goals are hilarious. At one point, he was at 30 goals and no one else was over 15. And so his game, he's... <laughs> he's just absolutely destructive out there. He's got 
84 points already halfway through the season. Just incredible ratings here. And going to be a high, high pick this year in the NHL draft. He's already 18, but he's a late birthday, so he hasn't uh, been drafted yet. So he's in his third season just ripping up the OHL. As you can see, he's got pointed games as a rookie. Kind of similar Shane Wright stats there. 61 games, 66 points. And then he's got 117 last year and just dominated the league. One World Juniors for the USA. It was just the best player out there in the World Juniors as a 17-year-old. This year, it's scary to think what he's going to do with the World Juniors. he got some cool things to show you next episode about that. And, yeah, I'm not looking forward to playing him on the USA team. I'm a head coach of Sweden, so that'll be interesting. But, yeah, it's just really cool. He's one of the most freakish players I've ever seen. Same with Bradley. He's had an incredible career. Bradley was a super high OHL pick. He was the third pick that same year, I think. Another, um, or no, I guess the year after. But, yeah, Bradley's just a beast out there for Windsor. So it's a couple of cool guys. If you look at the league's stats here, I'm in first place. Sudbury's really fallen off. They're having a great start, and then they kind of fell off a bit. I just have been absolutely dominant the last few months. I was started at um, I was started pretty normally here, and then I really took off the last few months. As you can see, there's just uh, a lot of wins there in that month, and then I've won every single game this month so far. In October, mostly all wins other than that loss and that loss. So yeah, it just had a really, really good last few months. And this month has just been exceptional here. 6-0. So we just are on a roll here with these two goalies lighting it up. As we can see, Mills is at a five-star uh, heat rating here. So he's on a tear. And yeah, everything's looking up. We've got 15 minutes a game from everybody. I haven't had to uh, blow anybody out. And I think the coolest stat of all is just the fact that if you look at the plus minus for the team, every single player, these are kind of some backup players at the bottom here, do it. And you can see what every single starter on this team is a positive plus minus, And almost everyone's performing equally with 15 minutes a game because almost every single line is just almost within 10 plus minus of each other pretty much. And the only bottom ones are because I think they're underperforming just a tad because this guy was learning right wing. So he's probably performing pretty weak. And they're all 16, so that was the only reason. But they're still a plus 2 and plus 3. But I think they'd be even higher in the second half of the season. So almost everyone is at playing at the same level, which is really cool to see. And it's nice to see this cool, steady 19-year-old actually lead the team there because he's been kind of a fan or a favorite of mine. He was only a seventh-round pick, so it's cool to see him uh, experience a good season there leading the team. And he's been on this team for a while now. So it's just cool seeing those late-round picks kind of turn out for you. Anyways, that's it for this episode. We'll do the World Juniors next.